and welcome. I'm Ignorant Northerner here, and this is finally the Raw Review. So, I'll have to check my notes a couple of times in this, so bear with me. So, Raw started out differently this week, uh, which was a good thing, I think. Um, we didn't get a 20 minute, 15 minute long Stephanie Kurt Angle promo, we got a Kane promo. Not sure how I feel about that one. Uh, it was just basically what they'd done before. There was there was not a lot to it, to be fair. But it was it was a nice change than having that 15, 20 minute promo. Um, and it was a good thing. Um, Roman Reigns came out and actually got cheered. Um, again... This is obviously a side effect of the shield thing at the moment, They're trying to get runs over. And you, anybody who's a smart fan knows that they're, what they're looking to do is Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, which is why they're trying to keep him strong. But yeah, it cheered. Maybe it's working finally after four years WWE. Maybe, maybe. But I doubt it can wrestle many time. We'll see. And, again, Roman Reigns is the most liked Instagram pic on WWE with the Intercontinental title. Not sure why. I'm sure there's a lot better um, pictures out there, but, yeah. Reigns gives out uh, a decent enough promo. Um, and they show a section of them is getting absolutely destroyed after Raw, which was good with the shield bomb, as they're calling it. Shield bomb. Power bomb. It's a three-man power bomb. Just call it that. Then comes out Elias with the Mr. Arch, which, again, was a bit weird. Uh, but he he challenges Roman Reigns for the Intercont title. And um, with the Mr. Arch with him. So we'll see that. Well, I'll probably go into that in a bit later on. First match is... Uh, Seth Rollins versus Cesaro. Uh, it was a nice little match. A um, couple of good spots to look out for is um, when Cesaro catches um, Seth Rollins on the shoulders, straight into a backbreaker. Thought that was brilliant. Um, but Seth wins, and Dean Ambrose is not there. Sheamus is away doing sabbatical in Ireland. Dean Ambrose is getting married, which I've done a video about, so please check that out. But congratulations to him and Renee Young. But it's the same old, same old. It's like we have, you know, we have Seth Rollins versus Sarah. We have, you know, Dean Ambrose versus Sheamus. And it's just mix and match of these two people, and it's just boring and stale. It's like, from a freeway match at least or something it's just this is something that WWE seems to be doing now where they just they have the single competitors competitors should I say from their tag teams fight each other and it's just I mean it's a different to doing the, the tag team with the with the one single person and them fighting but mix it up a bit WWE it's just it's just daft but yeah Seth gets a, a convincing win here in the end um There's a little interview with him after where um, he basically states that he's invoking the rematch clause for the tag team titles next week. So we're going to have a championship match next week, which is a good thing. But we've seen this all before. And where does it go from there? How does this push into Royal Rumble? Are they just going to trade the championship again and then all kick off for the Rumble again? It's, it's, I mean, if they were going to give the bar the title... Just for Survivor Series. Yeah, that's okay, but it just devalues the title and the bar themselves for winning it just because of that. Because they had S.H.I.E.L.D. booked in another match. Anyway, next year you get the Kurt Angle with the Cruiserweights. It's just, I don't care. It's the, WWE, WWE have made me not care about the Cruiserweights at all. Or 2 or 5 Live. And they were just sat and stood in the positions across. It's, it's like the women's thing. That you just, you're going to be stood 
across, so all that. So the hard cam can see you all the time. It's just, he's just daft. It's like, anyway, Kangol states, states that he's neglected the cruiserweight division a little bit. And so what he's going to do is he's going to invoke two fatal fall away matches. The winner of those two matches will meet on a one-on-one -on -one match to determine the next number one contender for Enzo's title. Is what it is. But these matches are now going to be on Raw. So, what's there to do on 205 Live? Why is there a reason to watch it? If all your number one contendership match is going to be on Raw, it gives further admission to the reason why you, why the hell should you watch 205 Live on the network? No wonder it's doing so badly if you can't put matches on that people are interested in. Anyway, I digress. Next, Titus first year. Well, uh, what can I say about this feud? It's like, it's not even a feud. It's like, I want this over and done with and towards the end of the night, it seems like that is actually what's happened. But at this point, it still seems like they're just doing this over and over again. They had Apollo lose to Samoa Joe, get Kukina clutched, and then Titus did. Then they tried a match next week that didn't even start. Samoa Joe just beat the hell out of them. And then this match where Titus put off a couple of nice little maneuvers to begin with and brought it to Joe for a couple of minutes, and then it was all over. Kukina clutch. Apollo comes in. Kukina clutch. What's more to say than that? Anyway, then we get a recap of the page return, which, if you haven't heard about, there is a video on my thing. I will put a link. Um, uh, God, hey, I mean, opposite cameras. All right, I will put a link down here for that one. And at the end, and if you want to look at Pages Return, or my video on Pages Return, that's fine. There's obviously a load of videos you can watch where you can see the return live. I did write down that I had it for the Titus match would last long, and it didn't, so that's good. Next, we had uh, Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Mickey James versus Paige, Shayna, and Mandy. And uh, yeah, um, let's be fair, the match never started. Um, it seemed like a good start, or a decent in-ring return for Paige to, to go to go into that match, but it just seemed that... Well, what happened is, is Sasha came out, Mickey James's music hit, she didn't come out. So sort of freaking weird. Then Bailey's music hits, didn't come out. All right. Then Paige comes out with, uh, with Sh Shayna and Mandy, who were calling themselves Absolution, it seems. I'm not sure if I like that name or not. If you do, make a comment. T tell me if you like the name or if you can think of a better one for that team. Not PMS, please. Um, that's been done before. Back in those days, yes. So, Mickey and Bailey have obviously been attacked backstage and destroyed, so to speak. And Alexa is the one to watch here because Alexa walks away. She's obviously still scared. And Absolution just destroys Sasha. Sasha puts up a bit of a fight, but it was three on one and they destroyed her. Next there's a Bray Wyatt promo, which Again, I've lost all faith in Bray Wyatt. He comes out, he could tell himself the eat of the worlds, the gods and stuff like that. Yet he loses nearly every other match. If you couldn't name somebody a god or the eater of the world, make him look good. Make him like a strawman. You know, make him win at least most of his matches. Because otherwise, it, it just doesn't seem right. It, it just seems like you know, he's a false god. Anyway, thank God Matt Hardy comes out, breaks up the, um, the promo because it's awful. Um, Bray Wyatt's, it's, Bray Wyatt does a good promo, but it's just the same over and over and over again, and now it's getting stale. Um, they had a quick match, Matt Hardy had a few thing, few manoeuvres in, 
um, tries a moonsault, but basically gets beaten very easily. The best section of this was at the end, Matt Hardy was pictured on the camera and he starts going, delete, delete, delete. And again, if this was a few weeks ago, you'd have a real chant, but they've teased this a bit. They've let it go. I don't know what's happening with the broken gimmick at the moment. I heard it's going to be under... Basically, the rights are up to basically purchase or to claim a stake on. And they've got 30 days, I think, to claim a stake. And we're not sure if TNA slash Anthem slash Impact Wrestling or whatever they call themselves these days because the name changes it on a monthly basis, it seems can even afford to, to purchase those rights to keep them away. So hopefully we might see Broken Matt Hardy. If anybody doesn't know Broken Matt Hardy, I'm not going to put a link up for that one. Just Google it. Trust me. It, it, it's ludicrous. It's mad. But it's kind of good and funny at the same time. And it got TNA through a lot of the dark days of last year when they were really struggling and we're going literally going bankrupt so hopefully it will bring Mahadi's fortunes around because I think he deserves you know to be doing something then we get a recap of the Braun Strowman uh, Kane thing um, from last week here's what it is watch last week if you don't know but then we get Jason and Kurt backstage and he's Basically trying to say that, yes, he was injured last week, but this week he's fine. Um, he seems to be playing... Jason Jordan seems to be playing this, this, this very narrow point between a heel and a face. And you just don't know which bit is in the middle, but it's looking like he's going to turn. And maybe it will finally end this stupid stupid storyline of this Kurt Angle son which is just so unbelievable and I hope he's just retconned by the end you know then we get a fatal four way match which I assumed when Kurt Angle said this would start next week but it started this week uh, Cruiserweights again because you know they're so good and you know they're so high up on that table got no entrances um Enzo were looking on backstage and his awkward camera angle it's like as he does and what's the Zo train like is this what they call themselves the Zo train it's the worst name I've ever heard of I mean call them the Amores or something like that it's Amores you could do that it, it's Amores <laughs> that works better for me maybe just me but it's Noam Dad Devere Rich Swan and Tazawa um, it was a nice little match and there were a lot of you know segments in it um, but WWE just made me not care about the cruiserweights and that's how I feel Rich Wong picked up the victory in the end so he'll progress through so hopefully we'll see next week who progresses from there um, Elias vs Roman Reigns is the next one and Elias comes out and says he's going to sing a song for The Miz which does to a Jay full of booze in the arena, which you're expecting. It's Elias, it's cheap heat. It works for him. And he gets heat in every town or city he goes to. So it works. Then you have the Mr. Raj to come in for a cameo with him. And they're on like mouth organ and harmonicas. And you can totally tell that they're not actually playing the harmonicas. If you look closely, watch the movements. And you can totally tell that they're not playing them. Um, but it was a nice little touch. And then we get the most amazing thing that I'd never expected a WWE crowd to shout. Or at least not with the way that this person's been booked. We got We Want Roman Reigns chants. I'm going to defend Roman Reigns a little bit here because I think he's a good wrestler. I just think that WWE have booked him poorly, pushed him too hard and mainly shoved him down his throats to the point that we don't really care. But it's nice to see that, you know, he has worked hard over the last few years. Him being off TV, you know, with his infection, whatever you call it, mumps basically it was. 
whatever WWE are pretending it's called. Um, but since he's come back, he seems to have been a bit more appreciated, and that's a good thing, and maybe that's what we're needed. But I don't think it's going to last. Um, he comes out, they have a match. Um, the match was okay, I suppose. It, a lot of people are panning this match. Um, Dave Meltzer did on um, Wrestling News. Yeah, there was too many headlocks, too much groundwork, but I've, Elias did a couple of really, really good spots, I think, especially the power bomb um, and the top rope elbow drop. That was good. So I think Elias is, is developing. I don't think he's ready for where he is. But I think it is start to look... If Roman Reigns wasn't the Intercontinental title holder, anybody that would have been in that mid-card who would have been the Intercontinental title holder, Elias would have had a, a really good two-and-fro match with, I think. And he deserves to be in that... in that lottery of people, you know, vying for that, that mid-card title, I think. Um, I absolutely loved it when <laughs> Roman destroys... Uh, the Mr. Raj, especially the spear to Axel, that looked vicious. Um, but Roman wins via spear, and we weren't expecting anything different, I suppose. What we didn't expect is what happened after, and this was brilliant. Just as we thought that Samoa Joe was stuck in an eternal feud with Titus O'Neil, and bang, he comes out, Kina Clutch, Roman Reigns, chokes him out. Leaves the security dragging him off. No, he hasn't finished. This is Samoa Joe. He's a destroyer. Comes back in, starts smacking him, and Joe just screams. He's coming for him. And we've had this battle before, but it's just been a quick one-on-one. -on -one, so it'd be nice to see these guys like proper collide, and um, it could be a good way of getting the title off of Roman. I, th I don't think he's going to lose it yet, but. It if the plans are true for WrestleMania, he's going to have to drop it at some time, and Joe would be... I Joe think he's above it, but I think he could be... It could be a relatively short-term holder for that title until they find somebody that they want to put it on. Asuka comes out next, and it's her in a match with Dana Brooke, and I wrote my notes again. It was like, this has been done and done and I was like oh, they're just going to have another 5 10 minute match and Asuka just kicks the holy hell out of her supposedly no Dana Brooks tells tells us on the title run she's got a strategy you know she's been watching the video from last week and she knows that Asuka comes out slow and that she better be ready for her not to blink Asuka does not blink Asuka jumps pulls her down and armbar for the submission within five seconds. Although, I'm gonna say, call alert, call alert, Michael call alert, who calls it the Asker lock. No call, it was an arm bar, I could see it. She wasn't behind her, it's not an Asker lock. It's an arm bar. But, hey, that's what you get for having your commentary stream all the way up there. Watch your monitors, guys. Then, Page and Absolution come out and surround the ring. Uh, when I say surround the ring, uh, this this is the thing with WWE um, when they do this this mob mentality of surrounding the ring. They don't really surround the ring; they surround three sides. This one I think was set so that Asuka could just slide back up the ramp. Um, whereas when they did the original one with Sasha, Page stayed at the front by the ramp. Which makes more sense, because when the shield do it, they always leave the ramp exposed. And all you have to do is slide out, run up the ramp. But by doing that, they're making it so there's only one that you can get out, which is the back one. And if you were to attempt to get out there and try and go into the crowd, you're probably going to be caught by one of the other people. So, kudos for them to doing that on the first time. The second time, obviously, it was made to let Asuka leave um, after the surround of the ring. And they let Asuka leave, so I'm not sure what's going on there, whether they want Asuka on the team or not. Then we had Jason Jordan versus Kane. 
which let's be fair didn't even really start the match started Jason Jordan got thrown out the ring um, clutched his knee again so maybe he wasn't 100% maybe he was lying um, maybe he's feigning injury because there's such a dynamic between him whether he's being heel or face at the moment nobody really knows um, but it didn't last long he got counted out and then Kane just went straight for the knee this prompted Finn Balor to come out which he's had a hard time this week if you look at the news um, Vince McMahon has called him bland which I don't agree with I I think Finn Balor is a good wrestler I don't think he's as good at promos but I think he's a good wrestler and pushed right and done right as done a year ago at SummerSlam he'll definitely be over but at the moment he's not and I think it's more to do with WWE's booking of him but he comes out has a fight with Kane it doesn't last long um, as Kane hits him with a chair for a DQ win and just keeps attacking Balor with a chair not much to it really just as he puts the chair over Balor's neck he climbs to the second rope and we were all expecting it it's Braun! And Braun Strowman comes marching to the ring. Kane attacks him with a chair and it has literally no effect. And it's just, from that point, it is just a Braun Strowman destruction of Kane. He's beating him, he attacks him with stairs, he attacks him with a chair, he power slams him, the running power slam onto the steps. And then, last not least, two chairs to the throat two not one I wanted one more than he got into the steel steps and it's Braun Strowman revenge what more can you say so I'm going to be interested to see what happens next week I thought the show was a fairly good show but again if you look at the thing there's 40 minutes of filler which is just ridiculous This the three hour show is too long uh, and nearly every re person who reports on wrestling says so. But that's been your raw, raw review. I am probably going to next week start polling to see what you think. But other than that, um, like I said, I will be putting videos up. Ah, can't do it. Here. And here. I really need to work out this reverse camera thing, don't I? Tell you what, I'm just gonna do it like this. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna put them here and here. Yeah? That's it. It's gonna be one there, one there. That's easy for me to do. Yeah. Thank you for watching. I've been Ignorant Narvana. Please share, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thank you.